about the last the last question about losses actually we uh, we are working on losses uh, currently and and the, the the work you mentioned might be a work by by Benjamin and Isabel Bouchel and me um so i mean if you want to discuss that i'd be interested to discuss this um but the talk the talk now is about something else um so shall i shall i start yes you can start i will try start from now to measure time so thanks a lot uh, to the organizers for this invitation and uh, thanks for the opportunity to present this work um so this is uh, going to be mainly about a paper we wrote last year with uh, Paula Ruggiero, uh, Benjamin Doyon, and uh, Pasquale. Um, but, um, okay, I, I should say that we have also other uh, papers and, and uh, current projects with, uh, on the same topic with uh, various other people. And among them, I should uh, thank especially Stefano Scopa, who is a uh, postdoc with Pasquale currently and uh, who has been pushing this uh, a lot in the in the past months. And we have also other works on, on GHD, which uh, I will not mention at all, but uh, that are not on this aspect of quantum fluctuations. Uh, all right. So. Um, for concreteness, uh, throughout the talk, I will I will focus ex exclusively on the Lieblinger uh, model, or if you, in a trap, so if you prefer the 1D uh, Bose gas, which uh, we heard about uh, in the talk by Dave. Uh, and uh, because what uh, we are doing is essentially some sort of semi-classical um, uh, approach, in the end, uh, I will uh, I will keep the uh, factor the h bar factor is uh, explicit um now um okay so the reason why we like uh, the, the this model so much uh, is because I, I would i would argue that it's kind of the fruit fly of, of quantum anybody physics uh, at least in the realm of uh, at least in the in the in the world of uh, nearly integrable systems so we learned from dave's talk what a nearly integrable system is and um, uh, so it's an integrable system with perhaps with some perturbations, but that that's at sufficiently short time, at least uh, is is still described by the integrable points. And uh, and and this has plenty of applications uh, and in the description of experiments, as we have heard in uh, in Dave's talk. Uh, so here are a few a few uh, experiments that you probably know. Uh, that I've played a crucial role in the in the developments of, of uh, uh, our understanding of quantum uh, out of equilibrium uh, quantum anybody physics uh, in the past two decades, and those are all related uh, in some sense to to this uh, to this model, so to the one D Bose gas. Um, not all of them are described exactly by the, by 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 this Hamiltonian, but uh, they are described by either by this Hamiltonian plus some uh, additional terms, or or by some close cousin of this Hamiltonian. So this is uh, why we like it uh, so much. Uh, but you know, uh, once you have uh, written that Hamiltonian. Uh, essentially, you're stuck. So I mean, it's a it's a good. Uh, starting point just to define the problem you're interested in uh, but but you can't do much uh, with that um, because you know analytical calculations are are very hard uh, even if you set I mean if you set v equals zero then the model is integrable you can diagonalize it by bit and, and, and learn a lot from this um, but um, uh, for if v is different from zero uh, then you cannot do that. And so you need to do some approximations and, and then you're not effectively not dealing with that Hamiltonian anymore. And uh, even numerically, this is not very uh, good uh, because you're limited to a very small, uh, very small number of, uh, of atoms. Uh, I mean, uh, as usual, it's because of the exponential growth of the Hilbert space. And even if you want to do uh, uh, to use tensor network methods, um, the, the fact that the model is continuous is a, is a problem. So you can do it, but it's not for a very large number of particles. 
Anyway, and so this is the reason why, uh, as Dave explained, this is the reason why we are excited about uh, hydrodynamic approaches. It's because we can uh, then trade this complicated many body problem for a simple set of uh, classical hydrodynamic equations. Uh, for, and for instance, uh, here you could think of uh, describing the problem by uh, just the standard, two standard Euler equations. Uh, for the particle density, so the average value of the particle density operator and uh, the, the local fluid velocity. Uh, and okay, so for for the GHD, because there are many GHD experts in the audience, of course, um, you may worry that this is not the correct hydrodynamic description. Um, and of course, I know that, uh, but for the next few slides, I'm just going to assume that it is the correct description of the gas, um, just for, for pedagogical purposes, because then I can, I can illustrate the basic, most of the basic ideas that just with those two simple hydrodynamic equations. And, and, and by the way, it's actually not too wrong to, to say that the gas is described by those two equations because this is really what happens actually uh, at zero temperature and uh, as long as you're not too far from the, from the ground state. Um, okay, so, so let's assume that we have those two equations. Uh, and now the the situation is as follows. So we have we are trading a full quantum many-body problem for a small set of classical hydrodynamic equations, and this is of course we can do this because of this assumption of separation of scales, from which we have already heard about in the previous talks. Uh, so the, the key point is that we can describe this, the, our system at macro, on macroscopic scales by as a as a continue continuum made of uh, mesoscopic fluid cells that are uh, that consist of a thermodynamically large number of particles and are that are locally equilibrated to some uh, relaxed to some stationary states um and what i want to stress is that we have traded a quantum problem so a, a, a problem with a, a model with a hamiltonian and some operators acting on some hilbert space but uh, for a, a set of uh, you know just uh, PDEs for uh, a few uh, a few continuous densities, and uh, so, so so really some just some classical question. So 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 you may worry uh, that uh, so you may wonder where where did the quantumness go? Right? So this is one question that you can ask is where is where does the quantumness appear in that equation? Particular, so I announced that I was keeping track of h bar. You see that there is no obviously no h bar left in that equation here. So, where is the quantumness? And the, another question is uh, I mean, once you have written that equation here, uh, are you actually losing important quantum effects that were present, present, present in, the, in the original problem that you have that have been washed away by this by taking that uh, Euler scale uh, limit? Uh, and the answer to the to the first question is uh, is is very simple. It's just that the, the, the so the microscopic model enters through the equation of states, so through the pressure as a function of the density. And so even though there is no h bar in that equation, it's actually hidden in the in the in the in the function p of rho. Uh, Okay, so that's that's uh, very simple. Uh, and the answer to the second question uh, is maybe a little bit, uh, just slightly more uh, subtle. It's just that, uh, of course, you are losing some effects. And among those effects, uh, one that uh, I will be talking about uh, in this talk is uh, the fact that uh, when you do this assumption of separation of scales and you view this uh, fluid uh, uh, as an assembly of, uh, of mesoscopic fluid cells that are locally relaxed, um, they, there is no correlation between those fluid cells. So they are, uh, so it's part of the basic assumptions that they are actually independent and in there. So there is no, no correlation. Uh, at equal time, uh, no no entanglement, no nothing. So I mean, if you 
Benjamin earlier was talking about correlation functions, but notice that those were always at different times. So if you excite the system somewhere, you can compute the correlation at later times at the different points. But here I'm talking about equal time, and at equal time there are no correlations in that uh, in that uh, classical suite description. Now, okay, so the situation is the following: we are started from the you know as some some real animal that is really complicated and that we would like to describe and we've traded it for the spherical cow and we are uh, sort of asking what 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 we are missing and uh, okay and so we have identified some of the things we are missing that are these equal time correlations or entanglement between fluid cells and the goal of this talk is to argue that one can reconstruct some of the features uh, by building some sort of quantum fluctuating uh, hydrodynamic theory and uh, so reconstruct some of the feature of the of the original problem but so the logic is again let me just uh, stress it the logic is start from the full quantum anybody problem uh, reduce it to some set of Euler scale classical Euler scale equations and then requantize those uh, and try to learn something from the original model by by doing that uh, all right, so and let me just uh, give you some examples of things that we can do once we have uh, developed that approach. So imagine, for instance, that you imagine you start uh, from the ground state of the of the gas uh, of the Leibniz gas in a double well potential, and you quench it to a harmonic potential. Uh, so this is something that you could imagine doing experimentally. Uh, 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 I mean, Dave was talking about uh, not, a, not, not a quench from double well, he was talking about a quench from uh, harmonic to harmonic, but, but anyway, this is the kind of quenches that you could imagine uh, doing experimentally, so just changing the longitudinal potential. And, uh, okay, so you can monitor the, the density profile of the, of the cloud of atoms. So here uh, on those plots, I'm sh what I'm showing you, there are three curves. So the true gray curves correspond to, uh, are, are from a DMRG simulation for small particle numbers, so for 10, respectively 10 and 20 atoms. And, um, and the orange curve is the, is the hydrodynamic uh, theory. So here I'm displaying the density profile and I'm also displaying the density density correlation at equal time. Uh, that is measured from DMRG and that is computed. So, and again, let me emphasize, let me stress that this is so. Uh, the, 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 just the density profile can is of is of course obtained uh, from uh, the classical hydrodynamic equation uh, frameworks, so, which is GHD here, and uh, and the quantum and and to get the correlation functions, we need uh, this additional uh, ingredient, which is the, this uh, reconstruction of the quantum fluctuations. Okay, so I wanted to uh, illustrate uh, this by with some other results that we had, but I think in the interest of time, I will skip this and maybe come back to this uh, later. So, uh, all right, so again, this is the logic of the talk. I want to explain how this uh, thing works. So uh, how we do go from here to here, how we can start, starting from this classical Euler equations, we can put some quantum fluctuations on top of it. And then I want to, I, I want to also say why this uh, should work. So why, we, in, why it's possible to uh, start from here, go here to this quantum fluctuating hydrodynamics and, and get uh, and still learn something about the, uh, the original quantum anybody problem. Uh, uh, why, why this actually makes sense. Uh, and this I will illustrate with, uh, again, with the, my two uh, standard Euler uh, hydrodynamic equations. And then uh, once we, I have explained this, I will uh, sketch how to adapt the ideas to, to uh, the full, uh, the full theory, which is generalized hydrodynamics, but I will be very sketchy here, and I will not. I will, I will avoid the the technical uh, aspects as much as possible. All right. 
So, um, okay, so the basic idea can be summarized uh, very easily. Uh, we want to identify the low energy collective modes of these uh, hydrodynamic equations, which are the sound waves, and then we want to quantize them to, to get the, a, a theory for the phonons in the system. This is essentially what it is. Uh, so, if I illustrate this logic on these two uh, Euler uh, hydrodynamic equations, what I should do is just to take a solution, consider a, a certain solution of these equations, uh, perturb the solution, uh, get a, a, an equation for the linearized, uh, the linearized uh, density and velocity variations here. And for simplicity, for if you do that, for instance, for the ground state of the homogeneous gas, so in, a, in the absence of a trap and uh, for, a for a background density that is just a constant and, and a background uh, fluid velocity that is zero, then you arrive very easily at this, uh, at this uh, equation here, uh, which uh, is, is an equation, a very simple equation for a sound wave propagating to the right here with Plus, velocity plus v and a sound wave uh, moving to the left um, where the, the you get I mean the, the sound velocity in the fluid pops out naturally and you see that the two modes uh, here are combinations of the uh, density and velocity variations parameterized by some dimensionless number k which is defined here okay so these are the sound waves uh, very simple and now we want to make that quantum. So we want to turn these small, uh, these small variations into operators uh, acting on some Hilbert space. So we, uh, we, we just uh, pretend that, we just uh, claim that these are operators and we impose uh, canonical commutations uh, relations for uh, the canonical commutation relations of a fluid for those which are, uh, of this type, and then uh, I mean the Hilbert space it just needs to be some represent a representation of this uh, of the algebra of these operators. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, so we are happy. We have operators. We have a Hilbert space, and finally, we need a Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian of the quant of this quantized theory uh, is fixed by uh, requiring that it reproduces the so the Heisenberg equation for the operators should reproduce the correct propagation of sound waves. So it should reproduce that equation here. And uh, the simplest choice for this is just a quadratic Hamiltonian, uh, which uh, you can see uh, here. And now uh, here you recognize the Hamiltonian of, of a Luttinger liquid with uh, Luttinger parameter k. And so this uh, is nice because, uh, okay, so now I have explained how this works. So we just take sound waves, linear sound waves, and make them quantum, make them quantum fluctuating by turning them into operators. Uh, and But this also sheds light on the reason why this works. So why the theory that we arrive at has something to tell us about the original problem and this is because there's some universality built in here. So, um, I mean, as we know, Luttinger liquid theory is universal. So, as as long as you set, as long as you get your two parameters right, k and v, then you're you have uh, an accurate description of the of the quantum fluctuations in the original problem, even though it looks like you have forgotten, you have some, yeah, even though it looks like many of the details have been washed out by this step, going from the full quantum anybody problem to the, to the classical Euler equations. All right, so, so this is the logic, uh, basic, basically, and, and what, we, what we have done uh, in this paper I'm, 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 I'm presenting is, is that we have adapted this uh, to these steps to, to GHD, generalized hydrodynamics. So, okay, so as we, as we have heard in, in, in the previous talks, this is, uh, this is the, especially uh, Dave's talk and-, and uh, uh, Two minutes, Gerald. Uh, so this is the correct hydrodynamic theory of the one the integrable systems, both quantum and classical. So for classical, actually, a classical system that has existed for a long time, although it wasn't called like that. Um, 
but uh, but for quantum systems, this was really introduced in 2016. And it was a it was a big step forward uh, in the field, and uh, and most importantly for me, this is the right hydrodynamic theory for the one dipole gas. I mean, both. From, I mean, this has now been established uh, from many perspectives. It's, in some sense, it's mathematically rigorous. It's also been established experimentally. And so, so this is the correct hydrodynamic theory that we should be considering. Uh, and uh, okay, so I will not present GHD in uh, in its uh, full glory. I will just focus on on the aspects that I need uh, to present this uh, this uh, uh, thing that we have done. So uh, again, let me uh, consider. So you you may think of GHD as a as an evolution equation for the occupation of phase space by quasi particles. This is what uh, Dave was explaining. Um, so, uh, okay, so I mean, just to sketch the idea, if you take the ground state in a double well potential, the density profile looks like this. Uh, and you, the state of the gas you may view as uh, in, 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 in a phase space representation here, or more precisely, rapid, uh, position rapidity space. So, this is the same rapidity as what as, uh, Dave was talking about. This is position uh, along the, the uh, atom cloud here. So you may uh, look at uh, phase space occupation. And for the ground state, this occupation is uh, one inside some region, this, uh, this orange region here. And it's uh, zero outside. Um, and, and then uh, what this is my, the, my model for my initial state in, in that hydrodynamic uh, framework. And then a GHD, what GHD does is that it uh, it tells you how this um, this uh, region here, this orange region, when the where the occupation is one, uh, how it moves in phase space, uh, and in particular, it gives a precise uh, evolution equation for the points along this uh, contour here, the contour that uh, of this uh, contour of this orange region. So the points uh, are moving around just according to, I mean, very simple basic uh, equation. That's just, so the derivative of position is the velocity and the derivative of the rapidity, which you may think as, a, as some kind of velocity or asymptotic momentum is, uh, is the force. Uh, so this is second, the, the second line is Newton's second law. And the first line is GHD because what's non-trivial here is that the Velocities gets uh, the velocity gets renormalized by uh, the interactions with the rest of the system. Anyway, so this I'm not going to present. This is a standard uh, GHD, and um, okay, I'm not going to say uh, more about this. Uh, but so then, what's once? I mean, this is if this is our classical uh, hydrodynamic description. Then what we want to do is to look at sound waves uh, around that, and the sound waves will correspond to small deformations of this contour that will then uh, propagate in time. Um, and um, okay, so so then there are some technical steps involved that I'm not going to uh, show. But one one important thing to notice is that uh, when this contour gets deformed in phase and and turns around in phase space, there are points uh, pos positions um, in space that appear where you get more than uh, where the contour intersects the the vertical line at constant x uh, several times, so more than two times, and this. Uh, this is a situation where the local state of the fluid is not no longer a Fermi C or a Fermi C up to a Galilean boost, but uh, it's, a, it's a split Fermi C or multiple Fermi C. And these states were uh, studied in great detail by uh, Jean Sebastian Coe and, and uh, Sebas Aliens, who was uh, his student at the time. And, and, and we are making um, use of, of the fact that uh, of these results. Okay, and 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 this, so in particular, they introduced a certain change of basis uh, that uh, makes the problem easier to tackle, and 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 this is a key ingredient in the in the technical uh, derivation. 
All right. Uh, and so finally, the theory looks uh, as follows once we have implemented all these steps. Um, so we have this contour uh, in phase space that en enclo encloses this uh, orange region that is turning around. This is just uh, this is the co this contour it just obeys the classical GHD equation, and then we sorry then we uh, put some operator that measures the small displacements of that contour. This operator must satisfy the commutation relations of a chiral boson, uh, which is written here, and and the Hamiltonian uh, we. Uh, fix by ask, asking again that it reproduces the correct uh, evolution equation for the sound waves. So the Heisenberg evolution equation for my uh, displ small displacement field delta, pro, delta rho here should uh, uh, obey this equation, which is the one for the sound waves that uh, we have derived. And, and the key ingredient in that equation is the effective velocity of GHD and a certain change of basis that comes from this work of uh, aliens and co. Uh, all right. So, uh, okay. So, I mean, this is what it is. Um, it's kind of uh, hard to uh, convey the, the details, but, uh, but the, 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 the idea is, is, is really this. Uh, okay, so let me summarize then. So uh, by quantizing the, the sound waves that we have in GHD, at least starting from states of zero temperature, and so so that uh, we are in, in uh, we remain in states of uh, zero entropy at all times. Uh, so this leads to a theory of quantum fluctuations around uh, GHD, and this quantum GHD or quantum fluctuating GHD is is a is a, a generalization of a, of a Luttinger liquid. So it's an in, inhomogeneous time-dependent multi-component Luttinger liquid. Um, and the point is that it's a, quadra it's a quadratic uh, theory. So uh, observables in the theory can be all be expressed in terms of this chiral boson. And, and we can compute uh, all correlation functions in terms of the two-point function of that chiral boson. And, and that two-point function uh, needs to be, in general, needs to be evaluated uh, numerically by solving the equation for propagation of sound waves uh, numerically. Uh, all right, so that's what it is. That's what the theory is. And this, uh, so, but this allows to do a, a certain num a, a number of things. Okay, so now some uh, open questions. So I think the one thing that is really high on our to-do list is to, Use this to compute the the momentum distribution of the move of the bosons in the gas. So this is uh, on the theory side. This is a very uh, a challenging problem to do, to be able to do this away from the Tom Girardo limit, and um, and uh, I think we are really close to being able to do this uh, with this approach. And uh, and okay, so and, and, and this this is experimentally very relevant so uh, so i really hope we will be able to do this soon and uh, finally an, an, another open question that uh, i think uh, several people probably in the audience uh, have uh, been thinking about but um so it, i mean we have we, this approach that we take the original quantum anybody problem then uh, tr trade it for a simplified classical description and then we requantize that uh, this is fine, but you may say you may argue that it would be better to go directly from the from the many body problem to the to to the improved description without uh, first uh, for, without first uh, uh, oversimplifying things. And uh, we know I, I'd like just to make a comment that we know how to do this, of course, for Tom Ciardo or so problems that map to free fermions, because in that case, GHD is nothing but the evolution equation for the Wigner function. And this had been pointed out by several people. It was, of course, known even long before GHD. Uh, uh, and so in that case, we know much more uh, just because of that simple observation. And, um, and, and then in that case, uh, this business is not this business of uh, quantum quantum fluctuating uh, GHD is not really needed. 
But um, in the interacting case, as far as I know, this is the only thing that people have uh, looked at so far. And uh, one way around that would be, of course, to have an analog of the Wigner function for the, in the, for the interacting uh, Bose gas. Um, uh, and this, by the way, would also uh, connect to the, the, to the points made by Dave that uh, it's kind of a mystery that uh, GHG still works for uh, numbers of particles as low as 11 or 10. Uh, because if we had a Wigner function for the for the for the interacting case, uh, then we could really interpret the GHD as an evolution equation for that Wigner operator rather than as a as a hydrodynamic theory. And so I think it could also probably shed light on the reason why things work for so numbers of particles that are solo. But at this point, this is a dream. And uh, uh, anyway, yeah, so that's it. Um, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jerome. You are over time, <laughs> so Sorry. I think Sorry. I can leave the time for one or two questions, but not more than that. So Karun has raised hand already. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, very nice talk. I had a, a question about uh, so if, if if you had a system on a um, on a lattice, then you can also have things like mod insulators, like you can have because of some Ohm-Klopp scattering or something. So it's not always Rutinger liquid. So this approach of going from the original model to the to some classical equation and then quantizing, um, does it all go through? If you, I mean, do you do you miss something when you have to take into account, let's say, potential non-Rutinger liquid like some mod insulator? Does it? Or, or everything just works somehow. Uh, well, I mean, then you're entering the discussion of what perturbations you should put in your Hamiltonian and whether whether or not those are relevant. And, you know. Right, right. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. So this, so this, I, when you are linearizing the um, Navier Stokes type thing, so then um, can linearization cause some issue? Can, can it miss some relevant operators? That was my. Okay. Uh, or I don't know. I mean, I, I guess. Um, well, just a bit, 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 bit ad hoc. That was just yeah. trying to understand how to relate the relevance, the relevance in the ultimate field theory to, mm -hmm. I mean, to validity well, of linear. You're really describing, if you really want to describe a mod insulator, probably, I mean, the, first of all, the, 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 the starting point would be a bit different, right? You wouldn't have, write mm -hmm. the same. Same, uh, just st the same Euler uh, hydrodynamic equation. Probably right? not. Yeah. Um, so how how would we modify that? That I mean. Yeah, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe someone in the audience knows. Um, uh, then I suppose you have to sorry, uh, introduce a mass somehow in a quantum system. So. I see. Mm -hmm. um, gap. So I'm not too sure exactly how it would work, but you have to change the fundamental theory. Okay. Yeah. Let me think about. It. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. But thank you for. Yeah. Thank you for a very nice talk. Thanks. Okay. There is a question by Herbert, and then we are done. Herbert, please talk. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, I mean. There seems to be the general problem. I mean, you have to identify, you know, what 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 are the commutation relations, or what what are you know the, the sort of the correct quantum fields. I mean, do you have to do this uh, for each case separately? I mean, just like you showed us in that particular case, or is there sort of like a general rule which would be applicable to a, to a more general situation? Uh, by more general, you mean? Well, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, you have to identify your 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 non-commuting fields, right? I mean, and you have to identify your commutation relations, and and. Uh, uh, but by more general the quantum fields, I mean. By by more general, you mean still? Well, I just say another another. You know, I give you another uh, integrable quantum system, yeah. and. Uh, so, uh, some, okay, some integrable spin chain, say, or something. For instance, like that. yeah, I mean, do you know to? Work the in the then the principle would uh, and then it would work in the same way yes I mean uh, the, the yes because the, you see the the, the point is that uh, we start from I mean 
the point is really that we have these uh, uh, this uh, uh, phase space or, or position rapidity space, and uh, we look at uh, zero entropy states. So so states that you can get by evolving uh, from uh, zero temperature states, and 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 um, and. and you will have the, you will have the analogs of those for for spin chains. No, sure, yeah. no, but I mean, suppose I made it finite temperature. I mean, can you use the same theory? Uh, no, no, I, I, fine. But you you know, I, I don't really know what it means to quantize a system directly starting from finite temperature theory. Right? Okay. Um, yeah. But but at low temperature, supposedly, I mean, you can just take the theory you described and then. Put a temperature there that will describe correctly asymptotics to a low temperature. Yes, yes, that uh, fine. Yes, but uh, I don't know what it. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know what that means. To take directly as as you know, I don't know, some theory at finite temperature and and quantize it. And usually you. Yeah, but it's the same for the standard Lattinger liquid. No. Yeah, I mean you can take this. You can take the low energy field. You, you can take the low energy field theory, which you have derived around the ground state, and then put uh, some uh, and then excite them, and then it, it excite the modes there to produce some finite temperature state. Yes, of course, but uh, I, th I think that was not Herbert's question, right? Herbert, Herbert's yeah, question. That, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, it's just very instructive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we are really over time now. I think we can. Yes, Sorry for going over. yes we can discuss uh, in separate place all this issue. Let's. I would like just to thank all the speakers of the day for the very interesting uh, set of talks on GHD. Uh, okay, many people will continue with the.